week's defeat at the first attempt in the championship. Two good wins to follow. Well, let's hear what he has to say about tonight's match. And he's been talking to Ivani Quillen. James, you had a few injury concerns during the week. Can you update us on them? Yeah, they're cleared up. Uh, Kevin Riley and Kian Ward is both fit to play this evening, so we're happy about that. You know, listen, this is a, a huge match for me. That uh, Kildare are coming in here as hot favourites. Uh, they've won the last ten uh, qualifier matches they've played in the last three or four years, and I suppose all those sort of stats is uh, stacked against us. But when you go out onto the field and the ball is thrown in, all those things are out the window. And we're really looking forward to it as a group. This is a, a huge match here at home in Avon for us, and we're looking forward to massive performance from this mid team. So Kevin Riley and Keane Ward are fine. Are there any other changes to the starting lineup? Well, we're just waiting on one or two uh, from the warm-up here, and if uh, there may be a change or two before the warm before the game ball is thrown in, uh, pending on the warm-up. Okay. Now you had a close shave against Galway the last day. You're confident this Meath team has put that experience behind them? Yeah, you know, listen, that's a characteristic you would expect in the Meath dressing room. You know, we were down by a pint with the uh, time up and come back and won by a pint. And that's something I would have been looking forward to seeing in the dressing room. And, you know, they dug out the result and we won ugly here last week. And if we win by a pint tonight, then I'll become a very happy man down the road. Yes, be golden tickets by one of the papers during the week such was the level of demand and level of interest in the latest meeting of Meath and Kildare will home advantage be a big factor for Meath Kildare some people have them as top three in the country as Tomas O'Connor looks to get into the action straight away but a big moment for Kevin Riley, the Meath fullback as he wins that first ball in O'Connor was sensational against Leash last week here comes Shane O'Rourke now Belts it in, left-footed towards Keane Ward. McLaughlin there with him, and McLaughlin just getting his right hand in there as Joe Sheridan races after it. Sheridan hits the deck, a frantic start to this. Third meeting of the two sides this year. Kildare won in Leinster five weeks ago. He made great contact with that, and that is a corker from Keane Ward. We've seen him do that many times before. Great contact, immediately. Very smooth contact, Rory McIlroy would be proud of that one. And when he starts well, he gets... Air midfield. And here is Flynn. Again, it's route one in towards O'Connor. And O'Connor in for Kildare, he hits the deck. The ball in the back of the net, a penalty is given. Of Trim and Meath. Fourth minute in Navin. Doyle. Great penalty. Sent Murphy the wrong way. Exact same position as last week. Just to the left of the keeper. Nice and composed. Perfect penalty. Seamus Kenny fouled by Tomas O'Connor. Keane Walk Meads only scorer in this match. And he goes for a second point and he's on form. That is a good sign for me. Maybe not good for Kildare. Ward has got their two points. Yeah, terrific ball again. A direct ball into the full forward line. He sidestepped his man and on his left leg over the bar. Terrific start to the game. Great tempo. Great long range passing into the both full forward lines. Back to O'Rourke. Had a glance at the post. Has to go back. Kildare with men back many numbers back Kieran Lenehan taken off after 24 minutes of the Leinster game in early June and getting away from the cover Lenehan still going goes back for help from Seamus Kenny and Kenny drills that over the bar great football from me they started extremely well against Galway here in Navin last Saturday night fell away in the second half but uh, three good scores they're level Yes, a fantastic score by Seamus Kinney. They held position. They were never rushed on the outside of his left foot and over the bar. Again, a great start to the game. Kildare are playing the, the, all their main positions in Kildare's head. That was easy, far too easy for Shane O'Rourke. Kildare not putting any pressure on him. Meade with the hand pass to Michael Burke, the late replacement, one of two late replacements into the team. There's route one for Stephen Bray from Joe Sheridan. Bray has McGrillen in front of it. A glance at the post from Stephen Bray. Fabulous score. And this has been a very fine start for Meath, despite the Kildare goal from the penalty. Again, a direct ball into the full forward line. This is fantastic football. Sidestepping over the bar with his left.
but it found its target. Its target was Andrew McLaughlin. Loves to get forward whenever he can. Here they go again. Route one, but it's Callahan this time. Callahan for Kildare. Murphy out with them. O'Connor is there. Support arriving. Back with Callahan. And Callahan slots that over. Fionn Dowling was there as well. It's their first score from play. Brings them level. And their first in quite a while. Yeah, again, a direct ball into the full forward line. Fantastic defending by Brendan Murphy in the in the meat goal. And what he didn't do is he didn't give away a penalty, put him under pressure, and he earned his point. But again, a direct five metres out with further, actually, when you take into account the angle. Midway through the first half. Contact wasn't bad. Well played, Morgan O'Flaherty of Kildare. Morgan O'Flaherty of Kildare. Young Dowling out in front of Gary O'Brien. This is better from Kildare. Owen O'Flaherty. The whole chance it's drilled over by Podrick O'Neill. Murphy was out off his line. A great build up from midfield. They're not actually trying to attempt to catch the ball in midfield, they're breaking everything down. And a good finish again by Podrick O'Neill, who gave that fantastic pass last week to James Cavan. to make a big impression on Johnny Doyle again he's no right to win that ball but he did so Owen O'Flaherty Gary White Morgan O'Flaherty lines this up he's made good contact with that and it's a lovely point Morgan O'Flaherty started the game at centre back but they attack from everywhere and when it's working it works just as well as this yeah, he, he started at centre-back and moved the wing forward. Eamon Callaghan went centre-back. He's back again. And coming out to try and win the ball. Joe Sheridan for Keane Ward. He's out in front of McLaughlin again. Here's Gilson looking to lay it off. Keane Ward for me. Brilliant block in there, I think, by Daryl Flynn. Mark Ward. Perhaps for Brian Mead. We'll see, but uh, let's follow Keane Ward with the 45 for me. Haven't scored since the 10th minute. There is their first point in that pick. Cabinet. O'Neill from St. Lawrence's. Now well, that's a tester for Riley as Tobias O'Connor gets out in front. Finds a Kildare man and Sean Dowling is that man, that young man, that talented player, only 18 years of age. Gorgeous score. Fantastic score made again by Tomas O'Connor. High ball in, broke. Fionn Dowling did the right thing, watched the break, got on his strong leg, and no doubt straight. So Keane Ward was the player who was fouled. Out of the hands this time from Ward. Same result as those couple of place balls. There's a collision off the ball involving Mark Ward and uh, Johnny Doyle. Hence, you, well, you could probably hear some of the reaction of the crowd down in front of us. There's a huge crowd here in Navan, very close to 20,000. Hugh McGrillan of Kildare for James Cavanagh. Gary White is in there, so Tomas O'Connor. Cavanagh steadies down, he wants to have a crack himself. Cavanagh, brilliant from James Cavanagh. They have at times this, well, it's almost a shoot on sight policy, but oh, that was James Kavanagh around, brilliant. But look how far off his man is. His man is about to, Queeving King is about 10 yards off him. As if he said, go on, have a shot, you're not going to score. Well, he took the invitation. <laughs> Easy for Johnny Doyle from there. Should be the same for Keane Ward, but. Uh, well, he won't thank me for reminding him he missed one from 20 metres against Galway last week. Was uh, in philosophical mood about it afterwards. They still have to be kicked over. He's done just that. Yes, he's not going to miss him tonight. Lively game so far, enjoying it and uh, still up for grabs. Yes, very, very much so. It's uh, a well-matched uh, game. I, I separated really only by the John Doyle's penalty. Um, 
both sides giving it everything. Very honest football. Um, and the, the tension is still in the game. Big crowd getting well involved in it. Uh, so, yeah, perfectly balanced, I suppose. There is a win factor. Uh, and we're pretty sure Mead have whatever's going in the second half. They'll probably need it because, as we know, Kildare score more and concede less in their second halves. That's statistically established under McGinney. So it, it looks towards Kildare at this stage, you'd have to say, but so little in it that a goal or a major decision could swing it back uh, for Mead. But I, I would say Mead have it all to do at, at this stage. Would you agree with that, Kieran? Yeah, I would, Michael. I think Mead started well in the first 10 minutes, but Kildare showed their class in a period of 10 minutes. They, they rattled off five points from play, and that's kind of the significant difference between the teams. We expected Mead would put it up to Kildare, but you would just think the second half, as Kevin says, based on previous performances, that Kildare would kick on a small bit. You know, five, they five, five of their forwards, well, James Cavan has come on, have scored from play. Uh, so you, you'd have to just fancy that Kildare will, will push on a small bit in the second half. Let's look at some of the incidents from the first half of that game. Now, Mead actually started the game, Kevin, quite brightly, but in actual fact... They Early June in Croke Park, Tomas O'Connor out in front of Kevin Riley. Hugh McGrillan. It's a purposeful start to the second half by the Lily Whites. McGrillan on the left boot. Fabulous scroll by Hugh McGrillan, the left cornerback. Knows how to slot the ball over the bar. Who says Connor Bax can't score, Dara? <laughs> Fantastic, beats his man, comes in on his left leg and takes a great shot from 35 yards. That's the way to point it. And that's over from Ward. Pretty much dead centre on the Kildare 45 metre line. The wind, we'd have to downgrade it to a gentle breeze. It's helping Ward. He's running after it. And the reason is because he knew he'd slotted it over. He does have a beautiful strike of a ball there, a, a, a super follow through, it looks really majestic. Well, when they met for the first time in Lens. Not going to be rushed at all, and why should he be? Doyle has done it, that's a great free. Sure enough, the side he was taking it from suits the right-footed kicker. Certainly not been afraid to empty the bench as he's doing. Seamus Kenny threads that through to Shane O'Rourke. A very fine margin. Morgan O'Flaherty there with him. O'Rourke shooting on side. Shane O'Rourke, and why not? That's a brilliant point from O'Rourke, and he punches the air in delight. Uh, when you're talking about the old spirit of meat, it's alive and well in the Sons of the Faller. Fantastic catch uses his strength and an outrageous kick from about 45 yards over the bar. Well, one sub replacing another because it's Graham Riley who's gone off. 24 is Jamie Queen in behind McLaughlin. So Ward was left with little choice. Oh, no, Flaherty. That looks good. It's dropped short though. Six foot five, Shane O'Rourke claims it for me. Seamus Kenny buzzing here Dara you can feel the thrill in the crowd could be the last day for one of these teams Paddy Gilsman Stephen Bray is looking for him he's taking his time Brian Farrell Seamus Kenny spots a little gap Kenny for me he's brought them level wonderful point from Seamus Kenny the Mead captain this period at the start of the second half in every Kildare match we've seen over the years, it's when Kildare really push on, but me, they're dragging them back and they've gone level. A great score again by me. I think that's four to two in the second half, four scores to two. And 
the foul given and the free into Kildare. Morgan O'Flaherty wants to get on with it quickly, but the referee is now happy for them to do that. James Kavanagh. That's a good ball from Kavanagh. And now Emma Bolton. Bolton! Could have gone for goal. But I suppose did the sensible thing and put it over the bar and put Kildare back in front. Yeah, he took his point. I suppose it was a uh, full back and the goalkeeper in front of him. But if it was a forward, he would have gone for it. His forward's natural instinct is to take the chance. 19 and a half minutes played, second half, round three, qualifier. The losers of the Ulster final next, and me, the drawn level. Cabinet for Tomas O'Connor. Callahan came towards him, O'Rourke making it very difficult for Brophy. James Cavanagh, 45 metres out. Emmett Bolton has snuck forward. Here is Bolton. Has to score Bolton. Emmett Bolton for Kildare. Has scored. He was the extra man. That's their first score since something like the 16th minute of the second half. Yeah, fantastic score. Well created by James Cavan. Instead of having a wild shot, he picked the pass on the inside and got it in good score. James Cavan and, and Johnny Doyle, these are the people they want on the ball now at this stage. People would... And you have to give a massive amount of credit to me for that. But here they come again. Morgan O'Flaherty, Kildare lead by one. James Cavan outside, nobody marking him. They surround it. Here's a chance for Sweeney, and Sweeney's put it over. A two-point lead in the blink of an eye. Again, a great passage of play into Ronan Sweeney and over the bar. Now, this is fabulous stuff from Kildare. First Emmett Bolton, then Ronan Sweeney. It's a two-point game. Anthony Moyles claims that no real pressure on him. Is there a Meath response? They have time. Less than five minutes. Shane O'Rourke. O'Rourke from outside the 45. Farrell's in after it and Connolly grabbed it at the second attempt. They've no Graham Garrity to bring in tonight, Meath. He's out for the season with an Achilles tendon injury. But will this be the end of the season for Meath? Riley taken out of the game. He seems to have done bad damage to his back. Here they come again. Cabinet for Kildare. Murphy out of his line. He has to retreat. Here's O'Connor. Bolton, goal! That surely is it. He scored a goal and two points in this game, all in the second half. He's been absolutely brilliant. And is that the end of me? Then is it Kildare into the fourth round of the qualifiers? Oh, that's fantastic football. Again, the right people had the ball in hand and they took the right options. Here, a good ball into Tomas O'Connor, into both, and he didn't try and catch it. First time into the back of the net. Right thing at the right time. Brian Farrell, they will not give up, me. That is the big thing about this team and who they are and where they're from last minute of the 70 and that's for Joe Sheridan with Hugh McGrill and it bounces in and he's finally got a point because it's bounced over the bar is blocked well the free in has been moved even closer now what will Brian Farrell do just slot it over yeah that's the sensible play at this stage with me here in our studio it was extraordinary, it was tit for tat, we were all getting ready for extra time, Kieran, and then Kildare, just in a space of a few minutes, bang. Yes, Michael, overall a great game, I think both teams deserve great credit. Like, this was a real championship game, we're, we're down to the business end of the season. Kildare knew it would be tough going to Navin tonight, and they got it tough. Uh, all credit to the Mead side, they put up a great performance, but that just extra bit of quality, you know, in the space of three minutes, Kildare won two, turned the game, and, and, and finished out probably deserved winners at the end but Mead put up a brave performance they've been proud of their performance tonight and as you know Kildare are now serious contenders you know they nobody will want to get them you would expect them that they will progress against Derry or Donegal and no, no one will want to meet them in the quarter final it was good exciting stuff Kevin Mike's day can I put it to you this way it, put, put this point to you that in that crucial period when Kildare won the game basically they had kept their heads Mead were playing fantastic but it was all going to be frantic it was. Would that be a uh, fair point? That's a, a very good summary because when they levelled it, the feeling certainly in the studio was that the momentum was with uh, Mead. And you recall Keane Ward had a long free that he pulled to the left and then Shane O'Rourke had...
Congratulations, GAA Championship Man of the Match. You said you're tired. You must be relieved to come out of that one alive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when you're coming up here today, it'd be a tough, it'd be a tough battling, especially against me. You know, you only pull away from them the last ten minutes as a showed out there today. But at the end of the day, all we've done is got ourselves into the next round of qualifiers, and we look forward to see who we get tomorrow. Like you say, you pulled away in the last ten minutes. You're becoming a team that has performed very well in the second half, in the last few rounds, in the last few matches. Rather, you must feel that that's a positive thing. It is, yeah. You know, um, we have to take positives from that, but as well, we need to work in the first half. Um, we are making chances in the first half, um, but we're just not converting. So it's something that we look forward to working on during the week. Um, we sit down and watch the DVD and work on it during the week. There was a period of play in the second half, um, culminating in your own goal. You must have felt the momentum swinging towards you at that stage. Yeah, you know, we, we started to implement our running game towards the last 10, 15 minutes of the game. We have the likes of Eamon and James in there who would run all day. So, so it, was, it was brilliant to work it that way. Uh, there's only one round of qualifiers left. Uh, would you feel some sort of, I suppose, positivity? It will definitely be an Ulster opposition, but you must feel comfortable going into the next round. Yeah, the two, the two Ulster teams are, are fierce good. You know, you have the total opposites there. You have Donegal who play a very defensive game, and it will be very hard to break them down. And then you have Derry who play a running game. So whatever way, that, whatever way it turns out tomorrow, we're going to have just our game for that. OK, Emish, congratulations again on your award. Well done. We had them on the back foot with uh, eight or nine minutes to go and I felt that that was a period of time, that four or five minute period from probably 12 to go to eight to go, mm. we could have sealed victory in that period and didn't take our opportunities. And come down to one or two decisions going for you, going against you, like you know, and how you react to those at a particular time. And, uh, so, you know, there's a whole lot of different things, but you just it makes you feel better coming out the right side of those games. Pat Spillane, how significant a victory is that for Kildare? Well, it was another very impressive victory by Kildare through the qualifiers, never been beaten. McGuinness teams have never been beaten in a qualifier round yet. Their fitness, their physique, their conditioning, you know, unbelievable. Uh, are they, I, I believe they're the number three team in the country at the moment. I will have question marks. They have yet, uh, and I, I'm, I'm placing them number three because of the poor Who's performance. Who's one and two? Oh, one and two. Kerry's one. Cork is two. Uh, because of Dublin's poor performance in Linster final, perhaps Kildare, because Kildare are building up momentum or whatever. Like that. The problem, the only two problems I have with Kildare is one. I still think they lack natural forwards. They lacked yesterday. Now they won. What, deservedly so. Of the starting six forwards, they got three points from play. I don't think they have enough natural, enough cunning, enough guile in the forwards to put away the top teams. And the bottom line okay. is, you look at, they've only played one top team this year, one Division One team, that was Dublin. They had an extra man for 30 minutes and they failed to put them away. And the whole of Dublin is ball final, Derry against Donegal. They last met 13 